Okay, so um, the title of the presentation is Photo Essay at Liminal Space Linking Photography and Film. And Ocula is the Australian collective of photographers um, creating photographic essays outside of the mainstream traditional media. Um, and that's a case study that I'll refer to throughout with the examples. Um, and the word ocula is Latin for eye or vision. And the motto is to reveal the beauty, wonder, and struggle of everyday life. Um, and this presentation um, is a practice led um, from practice led research and uh, presented from an insider's perspective. Uh, because I co-founded the Oculi Group 15 years ago. So my aim is to fill in some of the missing historical and aesthetic links in the liminal space between photography and film. When I first started making my own films, I'd emerged from a photography background with 30 years international experience, um, telling stories through photographs, creating photographic essays, as well as a media career as a photojournalist and a, a picture editor uh, from the late 1980s until 2012, um, creating film storyboards for the first time and working in non-linear video editing programs, my approach and techniques of editing were unexpectedly mirrored across mediums. So within this context, I began to erase the metaphorical line in the sand between the boundaries of um, practice and medium in photography and film, in my research and in my practice. Um, in my own editing process, and this is just from a series of photographs, it's, it's actually about 200, 250 photographs that were taken over a 10 year period from a series called Metropolis on the streets of Sydney. Um, um, so in my own editing process, I subconsciously placed footage into a timeline in a montage um, as if I was editing a series of still images. I experienced the similarities of editing film and photograph photographic essays in both the physical and the subconscious by juxtaposing imagery in a rhythm that flowed one after the other. And I'll just show you a very quick clip. Um, it's, oh, sorry. Um, uh, it's just an excerpt from uh, a short film called The Curse of Gypsy Blood. And this is a section which is very much like the City Symphony films um, of Zega Vertov, Joris Ivans, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so mapping the essayistics. So in addition to being a flexible, adaptive, discursive, and questioning experimental form, the essayistic is like a hawk surrounding something, spiral diving, a kind of walkabout, according to author Philip LePay in his appraisal of the personal essay. LePay's vivid mem metaphors describing the essayistic in the literary realm are applicable yet never correlated to the visual form of the photo essay in his analysis. Regarding the film format, LePay notes that the camera has a sluggish intelligence and essay films lack rational flow compared to the spoken wor word, which to LePay is clear and precise. LePay's analysis of the essay film alludes to the key reason why the photo essay has potentially been overlooked in much of the historic discourse of the essayistic, a viewpoint that gives supremacy to the words, often over shadows or ignores the intrinsic value of the visual in the essay format. The Pate said, what signals to me is that in spite of Andre Struck's tempting utopian term camera stilo, the camera is not a pencil and it is rather difficult to think with it in the way an essayist might. Now, academic Timothy Corrigan suggests that the photo essay is the precursor and key intermediate link to film. He said, if the essay film inherits many of the epistemological and structural distinctions of the literary essay, especially as it plays itself out as the dialogic tension between the verbal and the visual, a key transitional um, practice linking these two forms of representation is the photo essay. Academic Philip Mather uses Stanley Kubrick's early career photojournalism as a case study to um, draw the connection between photojournalism and film. Mather describes the photo essay as a compromise between the tight, compact statement of the single photograph and the time-based medium of film. The literary essay is firmly established within the evolution of the essayistic format. So this 1997 tome, the Encyclopedia Essay, is a thick academic resource for the history of the essay format um, in practitioners in different forms. 
Um, the film essay section has a three-page entry by Nora Alter. The book is 1,200 pages. The photo essay, which is much longer established through the print media, is curiously missing altogether in the book, um, except for one short re um, reference to James G, which talks about Walker Evans, and I think in a couple of sentences, but there's no entry for the photographic essay. So does this mean that the photo essay linked to publishing in newspapers and magazines was not considered essayistic and discursive, even though it had introductory text and captions? So in, defi in um, defining the photographic essay, uh, in the Encyclopedia of Photography, it describes the difference between the picture sequence, the photo story, and the photo essay. Uh, the picture sequence being the chronological series of photographs of a single event. The picture story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the photo essay, according to photo editor Arthur Goldsmith and noted by Mather, fits into the mainstream media as well as a more personal and artistic work. Um, Goldsmith. It compares a photo sequence like a selection of stills taken from a strip of motion picture film. I posit that Goldsmith's idea with a connection to the moving image can be extended from the photo sequence to include the photo essay. Henri Claudier Brisson, his um, enduring legacy, besides his photographs, is the notion of the decisive moment, as well as the co-creation or the creation, sorry, of the esteemed uh, Magnum Photos Collective. In regard to Claudier Brisson, photography theorist David Campney claims if his death represented a moment of closure for the medium, it was for that model of art photography derived from classic photojournalism and reportage, a model which evolved rapidly in the interwar years as a counterpart to cinema um, a cinema. Individual instances would be edited into paracinematic photo essays for the illustrated press. So the next photo, photo essay that I'm going to show is by uh, photographer Nick Moore uh, from New Zealand. Um, Nick works for the Sydney Morning Herald newspaper, but most of his work, his photographic essays, are outside the print media. Um, Henry Cotty Brisson died in 2004. So although many media outlets have ceased publication since the global financial crisis from 2008, Campney's time frame and the overall assertion that Brisson's death marked a closure of the medium that created the photo essays is not looking at the larger picture. The medium has expanded with technology at the same rate that media outlets have constricted and in numerous cases ceased existing. The internet, with a burgeoning proliferation of online magazines, became one of the primary outlets for professional photographers creating, presenting photo essays in a virtual slideshow um, on a continuous loop in a new filmic version of photography in motion. So the moment of Henri Cartier-Bresson's death did not mark the end of the photo essay in the journalistic or artistic realms. The transition for the photographic essay coincides with vast numbers of photojournalists working on their projects outside of the media. Philip Mather suggests that Timothy Corrigan's description of the photo essay linking photography and film refers to work with personal, lyrical and artistic forms of expression, not the typical published magazine photo essay. So this distinction is key to understand the contemporary photographic essay outside the media in terms of poetic license, their narrative storytelling, using continuous frames and in internet slideshows, or layouts in books. Uh, this is where the photographics, the photo essays of Oculi, um, depicting the extraordinary and the ordinary in Australia come into focus. So I'll just finish this. So this, this was a series he did um, on a road trip through, throughout New Zealand with his son. So Oculi is emblematic of the normative art practice and digital creativity in regard to producing the photo essay outside the traditional media. Um, in his um, essay, Eye of the Beholder, um, Australian author David Marr paints the picture of Oculi 
this was 10 years ago, as a bunch of whinging photojournalists who will never leave the world of newspapers as they take the newspaper training with them when they go out into the field on their own behalf. So Moore equated the gloominess of Oculi to the photographer's attempts to beat down the doors of galleries to exhibit large um, bodies of work or to create fat books of photographs which will languish in bookshops where people will look at them but rarely buy them. So one of our co-founders, Trent Park, this was his first book published in 1999. Um, Trent's, Trent was uh, the first um, Australian invited to join Magnum and this self-published book is now on the market for two and a half thousand dollars. Newspapers and magazines um, during Oculi's existence went from earning more money than they knew how to spend to making so little that their survival is in doubt. On the other hand, Mar said, but that's where the contradiction is. The same internet that's cutting newspapers down to size is a photography gallery that stretches to infinity. So in the year 2000, when I co-founded Oculi, out of the frustration of seeking outlets in Australia to showcase these long-term photographic photo, photo essays, that, um, um, and the website itself has undergone several complete resurrections um, to keep up with technology, ra rapidly changing browsers, slideshow formats. Um, so slideshows online, and I'll, I'll just um, go to one really quickly. Okay, I'll just, just show you what I'm talking about with, oops, sorry, with the slideshow format. Um, uh, so this is from Nick Moore's series, The Last Day on Earth, um, Chasing Storms Around the World. And as you can see, the, the photographs, as most internet slideshows, they just change over in a continuous loop. Um, so slideshows created an, um, a fluid transmedial association of imagery edited to form narratives to tell unique stories overlooked by the mainstream media in Australia. A photo essay on the internet flows from photograph to photograph as the imagery slides from frame to frame in an intricate set of sequences like a filmic montage. Um, Stephen Heller suggests that the picture magazines are linked to cinema newsreels. He said... Um, uh, photography may have been static, but when edited like a motion picture and narratively paced to tell a story, images of never before recorded sites offered audiences the same drama and more detail than any newsreel could. So returning to Campney's claim that the photo essay died with Cartier Bresson is pointing towards the economic demise and extinction of the print media formats such as the picture magazines. However, Campney's declaration does not seek to explain the new or reformulated forms of artistic driven um, outlets emerging since the start of this millennium, such as the Oculi website, and Oculi being the normative um, um, practice around the world, um, that utilize the photographic essay as the basis for visual storytelling in internet and book publishing. Both Campney and Hello, sorry, just one second. Okay. So how do I get this to come back up? Um, slideshow, play from current slide. Voila. <laughs> okay. Um, so both uh, um, Campney and Heller, have, have they both ever looked at the proliferation of the zine as a contemporary outlet for the photographic essay that is reminiscent of the era of the photo roman? Zines are usually self-published and inexpensive to make. Uh, this is by one of our photographers, George Vugoropoulos. Uh, um, called Son of a Bulgarian. I'll just show you a very brief excerpt from it. <coughs> so, um, one of the Oculi co-founders, Dean Sewell, um, he, um, he talks about the contributions to the visual grammar of contemporary Australian photography and he makes two points that first there's a movement against the traditional photojournalistic format of a narrow selection of photographs um, or a single photograph to be printed in the media to a wider selection of photographs that build a narrative or an uh, idea in an edit or a sequence. Uh, this is his, I'll show you um, a series of 15 of his photographs from the series of Red Brick Wonderland. Um, Dean grew up in this uh, suburb called Hillsdale and he, over a five-year period, he went back 
um, to photograph in, his, in his, the neighborhood where he grew up. And he would go at certain times of the day or certain times of the year. And he used a very limited color palette of red, blue, and I believe yellow. So in the second point is that the internet allowed a new form of editing from the dominant photograph to the smaller supporting images of details um, from a published layout to an egalitarian display of image after image that appear often horizontally in a looped slideshow that resembles a film with dissolves between cuts to fill in the missing time. Uh, Timothy Corrigan refers to the photo essay as containing a structural linkage of separate photographs whose implied relationship appears in the implicit gaps or unsutured interstices between those images. Um, Jay McKenzie suggests that between the still frames in Chris Marker's film La Jete, the viewer is called upon to animate the spaces with their own understanding. And according to McKenzie, this is done by accessing one's memory of visual imagery, an inner space that is connected to... Um, image spaces. In the still photo essay, the spectator must fill in the implicit gaps and spaces between the frames in time and space in a similar way to Mackenzie's description of La Jete. In his um, essay, The Double Helix, um, Raymond Ballou studies between the images, the pas passages and contaminations of beings and systems occur more and more often as such uh, passages are sometimes clear but sometimes hard to define and above all to give a name to. The passages between the still images and the photographic uh, photo essays, sorry, of oculi, are short breaths or pauses where the viewer fills in the time and the narrative based on the preceding and the following images that flash onto the screen in a continuous slideshow. Ballure argued that photography and cinema, if you prefer the cinema captured by photography, the photographic, then the return journey with photography as a starting point. On the other hand, philosopher Gilles Deleuze noted that at the point where the cinematographic image directly confronts the photo, it also becomes distinctly uh, radically distinct from it. Corrigan refers to the lack of a blueprint to define the essay format. The photographic work of Oculi has been historically difficult to categorize as the photographer's paid work for over a decade was in the print media. The term journalism did not fit well with these more personal essays that crossed the boundaries of art. Um, these boundary crossings became easier to categorize when many of the photographers left the media. The photo essay, however, has remained tied to the print media in much of the current theoretical critical discourse. So um, in terms of editing, historically the serial photographic layout in the picture magazine is what film theorist Noel Birch termed the zero point of cinematic style. Philip Mathers said a common strategy was to print related images in a serial fashion as a means of making the photographs look like frames selected from a strip of motion picture film. Differences between photo essays and film exist through the written word, uh, the written word image relations of the photo essays versus the sound image tracks of the film. Um, Mather highlights the concept of the long take in film that which originates in classic magazine layout strategies that affect the reader's rhythm in scanning the photographic spreads and turning the pages. My argument con um, re uh, regarding contemporary editing is that the internet slideshow where photographs run one after the other, like a, film, a horizontal filmic projection of stills, refers back to the serial picture layouts of magazines just such as Life and Look and Vu, as well of, as Birch's ideas of zero point of cinema, cinema cinematographic style. Um, Mather said the photojournalistic version of uh, zero point of cinematic style uh, was also characterized by relatively unobtrusive layout, um, one, sought, one that sought to draw readers into the story and support the essay argument um, by highlighting the images, not the patterns in which the photographs were arranged. So this next photographic essay is by um, our photographer Raffaella Rosella. And, um, She's a photograph in Aboriginal community in Moree, in um, New South Wales, in Australia. And she's photographing from an insider's perspective because she has also come from a disadvantaged um, background. And many of these people are people she knows or are related to. So editing photographic essays is a process of juxtapositions where the space in between the images is filled in by the viewer from the continuous images and discontinuous editing with images moving one after the other and so on. Mather points out that continuity and discontinuity editing form an intermediate 
category since both exist in photojournalism and film, but are articulated differently due to the media's unique substances of expression. Hollywood film editor Walter Murch fo focuses on the discontinuity of shooting and editing. He outlines an editing system using still images and panels, a bit like the first images that I showed you, um, laid out like a book. You read the photographs from left to right, then down a row, left to, to right again, just like reading text. When you get to the bottom of one panel, you went up to the next and read across the, the first line, etc. So the juncture between those panels was an interesting thing to look at because you juxtapose frames that were never meant to go together. And yet there they were, right next to each other. So Murch's film editing technique is similar to still photographers, including most of the photographers in Ocula, who print out their images, place them on the floor or on the wall to edit a large number of prints down to a refined, flowing photo essay. Uh, theorist Garrett Stewart draws a theoretical and material link between photography and film, using the example of the slideshow as the intermedial link. Um, I'll just mention this particular photograph of Raffaella's just won a first place World Press Award this year. Um, Stewart further links the pixel as the alignment be between the photogrammatic seriality and the digitally intermixed cinema. Nonlinear editing in the digital age permits each frame per second to rush past or to stop on a single frame. Stewart notes that the cinema is a photomechanical imprint in that moment by moment sequencing is the underlying foundation of photography incorporated into cinema. Stewart said, film is photography motorized, made by an engine of serial motion. Um, instead, the digital image spills its grains across a, a single plane while racing to winnow and reseed itself before it is ever, 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 for the least moment, complete enough to be fleeting. Alan Sekula said, still photographers ought to consider vulgar and impure formats such as a slideshow. One day in the near future, these slideshows will be relegated to um, uh, uh, media archaeology, well that's my term but it's probably not the same term other people use for media archaeology, but similar to the demise of the Adobe Flash program. The slideshow, the slideshow however, remains an ongoing contemporary link between the mediums. Um, there's a visual grammar of immobility associated with a long take and David Campney said cinema's long take may strike us as boldly photographic and is often described as such. And considering the lingering gaze of the viewer, the long takes, tongue, long takes in films such as Stray Dogs and Chantal Ackerman's um, from, from the East are two examples of slow cinema where the viewer fills in the gaps much like the photo essay to make sense of what is happening in and out of the frame as well as between frames and scenes. Michael Tarantino writes of um, From the West, the tension that Ackerman creates is rather one of consummate ordinariness, of life observed and of the ultimate unpredictability of those observations. This ordinariness of, of life observed is what enemies the approach of the photographers within Oculi to capture the extraordinary nature of the ordinary in daily life and much like Ackerman's long takes in From the East between a glimpse and a gaze. And I'll just very quickly show you one film clip from um, photographer David Maurice Smith. He's done a multi-year photo essay in the Aboriginal community of Wilcannia in New South Wales. But this is, um, he also created this filmic piece and it, this is from an outsider's perspective. Um, what, what I love about that piece is that it could be long takes or it could be still photos. Um, so Hollywood film editor Walter Merck argues that in choosing a representative frame, what you're looking for is an image that distills the essence of the thousands of images that make up the shot in question, what Cartier-Bresson, referring to in still photography, called the decisive moment. Um, the photo essay is a grouping of decisive moments, um, creating an ongoing narrative and connecting the images as a group is overlooked in much of Merck's um, analysis. Liv Haus Hauskin refers to the La Jete style or slide motion film Film. The online slideshow is a reflection um, of the style of La Jete as well as the digital transformation of the mechanical device to computers. 
online slideshows are a new example of, of what Tom Gunning has called apparent motion from a study of 19th century devices where the images move through at speed. Gunning said, cinema is an art of the moving image, yet, per yet materially it could be said simply to be made up from a series of still images. This apparent paradox between the still and the moving images has been noted by nearly all kinds of cinema, but resolving this exchange between stillness and motion, or rather the transformations of one into the into the other still eludes both empirical scientific explanation and I feel deeply reflects rooted ideological prejudices. So according to theorist Neil Campbell, concepts emanating from the Photo Cinema Conference a few years ago at the Derby Format Festival reconsidered the interconnectedness of photography and film as muse and practice by blurring the lines between the hybrid spaces in the contemporary um, digital age. According to Alfredo Camerati and Hugh Davies, the relationship between the still and the moving image inscribed in the notion as of cinematic is complementary in some ways and oppositional in others. But it remains an intertwined and long-standing history of ever-changing forms and diverse practices. Camerati and Davies point to the hybrid examples of flip books and slideshows as existing in the blurred boundaries between film and photography that form part of the missing history between the two mediums. Although not mentioned directly, the photo essay is inferred within the passages and outlets showing groups of photographs edited together in the critical discussion linking photography and film. So in conclusion, uh, from the golden era, the era of the printed pages in publications um, to the groupings of decisive moments presented as photo essays by photographers in art or journalism, to the similarities in editing between mediums, to the loops of internet slideshows, the photo essay has historically crossed border zones with film. Film theorists have written extensively about the still image in relation to the motion, to have relate, from the still image um, related to motion, from the metaphors of death, melancholy as well as fire and ice. The still image or photogram or film still is another related topic that's often discussed in critical film discourse. The photo essay, however, as a group of photographs edited into a rhythmic flow has not been thoroughly critically examined with its links and blurring of the boundaries between photography and film. We live in an era where these rapid advances in digital technology forces a re-evaluation of the border zones in between film and photography. The photo essay exists historically and aesthetically in this liminal space that links photography and film and operates as a contemporary um, intermedial modality blurring the boundaries. As technology changes before we next blink our eyes and a series of still images becomes a Facebook GIF and new cameras capture 3D images on the consumer market, the photo essay will shift in outlets and viewing. Photography and film have an interconnected history as muse and practice. Photographer and filmmaker Wim Wenders acknowledged within, within every photograph there's also the beginning of a story starting once upon a time. And according to Wenders, every photograph is the first frame of a movie. Thank you.